Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Wednesday, November 4th, 2015. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. Executive Director of the Nevis Historical and Conservation Society, Evelyn Henville, has congratulated the New River Farmers Cooperative Society for undertaking the New River Spring Restoration Project. Henville was one of several speakers who commended the society on Saturday, October 31st, when the project was officially launched. I um, just really wanted to say congratulations to the New River Farmers Group for such a project that um, government didn't do. And we need to be able to say thank you to partnerships like this because government cannot do everything. And this is why people have got to get involved in communities like this to make things happen because government cannot do everything. And it takes us citizens to get involved and partner with each other. She expressed congratulations especially to President Merla Isles as well as Isles Watts, National Coordinator of the Global Environment Facility, Jeff, for funding the project. I really tip my hat this afternoon for the leadership uh, Ms. Isles has, has brought to the, the uh, Farmers Association and that Jeff has been able to function in our small islands a little bit more than it used to. So I'm very happy as well that Ms. Watts has been appointed as a national coordinator because Jeff has been around for a very long time but we were not benefiting from Jeff. And so now to see that all these small projects are benefiting. We bring in water from the mountain down miles away to the farmers. I mean, that's awesome. And so for me, it's really, really um, uh, appreciative because this project will help our project. Our reforestation project is going to need water. The Nevis Historical and Conservation Society, along with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Nevis Water Department, and Hope Nevis Incorporated, are collaborating with the New River Farmers Cooperative Society to implement both projects. We are partnering with the New River Farmers and bringing a reforestation of the entire coastline of New River. And this again is, as Ms. Atherton mentioned earlier, the more money, more economy, stronger economy, stronger communities. That reforestation of, of the coastline here will offer protection to the farming association in terms of the sea blast, protection from the, the coastline, protection from losing all of our vegetation there, protection from the wild animals. So when we partner like this, that's what makes our projects more sustainable than us sitting back and waiting for somebody else to do it for us. According to Henville, through its partnership with Hope Nevis Incorporated, the Nevis Historical and Conservation Society has been able to secure $1 million from the European Development Fund and $150,000 from Jeff for the two-part reforestation project at New River. Over the next two years, we have a very strong project, reforestation and replanting of trees that are necessary to us. We see where we are going to replenish the coconut walk with its coconut trees, grape trees, which is a food, um, almond, wild tamarind, all of those are trees that we can um, benefit from in food and in economy. So. This for me this afternoon is extremely exciting and I really thank the New, Re New River Farmers for this um, um, strategic foresight that will eventually benefit our project. Executive Director of the Nevis Historical and Conservation Society, Evelyn Henville. Gingerland Secondary School student Raul J. Williams was on Monday, November 2nd, awarded a $1,500 US dollar prize for placing second in the region in the senior category of the 2015 Florida Caribbean Cruise Association's FCCA Children's Essay Contest. Williams won second place for his discourse on the topic, How Has the Cruise Industry Improved My Country? Assistant Secretary John Hanley presented Williams with his prize on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism. I want to heartily congratulate Royal J. I've been following his progress for a number of years. Um, he has made Nevis very proud. He has put us on the map. And Royal J's performance at the, the Tourism Youth Congress has been so outstanding that he has set a model 
and everybody else around the region from, from way down south come right up. Everybody has been watching Walter because his performance has been so good that everybody wants to be like Walter. Put your hands together for this one. And his winning streak, his winning streak continues. I, I think you're aware that he recently um, gave first prize in uh, the OECS essay. And we are very proud of him. Everybody around the, the Caribbean, I'm sure by now, has heard of Jindal at secondary school. And all because of Royal J. Williams. Accepting his prize, Williams encouraged other students to enter upcoming competitions so they and their school may realize the benefits. I went to Curacao last week or the week before. And while there, I received congratulations uh, for winning the essay competition, of course. And I realized that a lot of uh, persons from around the region now recognize the Gingerland Secondary School. It has become a school on the map because we have... <laughs> we know we are small here and, and because of our sterling contributions to the Youth Congress regionally, we now produce some good junior ministers and I want to encourage you all to enter that as well because it is important for us to continue our winning streak here. And I won't be here forever, this is my last year, and I encourage you all to go out and make yourselves proud, make your families proud, and most importantly, make your school proud. Meantime, the Gingerland Secondary School was also awarded a 1,500 US dollar grant as the school that Royal J. Williams represents. We would like to say a special thank you to the Ministry of Tourism, or the representatives from the Ministry of Tourism who came to do this presentation this morning. We are very grateful for this check. We are very proud of Royal Day. We are very proud that we were able to win $1,500, the school US, and we are going to put it to good use. So give them a round of applause again, please. Meantime, the local winner of the junior category of the FCCA Children's Essay Contest was also awarded her prize on Monday. That student is Michaela Maynard of the Nevis Academy. Hanley presented Maynard with her prize of $200 US for her essay on the topic, How Has the Cruise Industry Improved My Country? It is my great pleasure and privilege to present this, this check to Ms. Maynard, young Ms. Maynard. I want to congratulate her heartily on behalf of the, minister, the Minister of Tourism, the Ministry of Tourism, and the FCCA. You have done very well, and I want all of you to look at her as an example. You can achieve great things. All you have to do is put your mind to it. And I want to congratulate you. You have done very well. I am proud of you. The Ministry is proud of you, and I want you to continue to do well. This is just a small sign of great things to come. Heartless congratulations. And Lee, who was accompanied by tourism education officers Vanessa Webb and Dawson Otley, also thanked the Ministry of Education for continuing to partner with the Ministry of Tourism in these initiatives. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the schools on the island, as well as the Ministry of Tourism. The Ministry of Tourism for putting out the challenge to the students and for exposing them to the material and for establishing the framework for them to write this essay. And also the Ministry of Tourism. Um, and I must say, in Nevis, we have become the envy of several other islands that don't even have a tourism education program. So the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Education must be highly commended for facilitating the programs of the Ministry of Tourism and enabling our students to be exposed to this regional competition. So I wanted to put hands together for both ministries of education and tourism. Still to come. We are glad to be here as part of our 20th anniversary. We did not leave you out. The details after this break. Hey, you know it's your groovy so come on our king, your boy Speedy, and I'm here with the Inland Revenue Department. And I love my side dish. And guess what? I also love Nevis too. And as a responsible taxpayer, your tax dollars help to build our nation. So I'm here to tell you, pay your taxes on time and be a responsible citizen. And don't get me wrong, it's a serious song. I pay my taxes. Boom!
Welcome back. Imagine that will be the theme under which the Department of Education will host its first Wayne Forest of Reading Book Festival on Friday, November 6th. Wayne Forest of Reading is the first specialized recreational reading program in the Eastern Caribbean managed by the Canada-based One World Schoolhouse Foundation, which will partner with the department to host the activity. Richard Clues and Sonia White are the foundation's co-founders. The, the uh, program itself is uh, based in the belief that books create curious minds. We use the expression, imagine that, to, re to, to really remind readers that they're reading for the story, of course, but in, on top of that, what they're doing is they're acquiring the skill to believe in things that are perhaps made up and, and not uh, rooted in reality, but that's a very useful skill because that develops a child's ability to conceive fresh ideas and to conquer challenges and problems along the way in their life for themselves and also for their community. So there's a very positive and practical aspect to reading. The program, which runs for two weeks, requires the students of grades 3 to 5 to read 12 books and give their opinions in the form of a passport. And this serves to remind us that the, the Rainforest Reading is in fact a destination and the children are encouraged to read all 12 books as quickly or as slowly as, as they wish. There's really no, uh, there's no competition involved. The children acquire the uh, ability to uh, comment on the book, which is very useful for the CXC Common Entrance Exam in grade six. But more than that, it's a way for the children to affiliate with each other. They are peers after all. Some will prefer some stories uh, over others, and that's fine. Friday's festival will commence at 8.30 a.m. with a parade from the Artisan Village through Main Street, Charlestown to the El Camido T. Willett Park. At that point, we'll be breaking up the schools into groups and uh, we'll be doing workshops. There'll be all sorts of activities uh, based on literacy, but based on the idea that they have to be fun too. And that will uh, take us into the afternoon and it will run about the length of a typical school day. So that's what we're, uh, we're here today to do, to promote awareness uh, in Nevis of the festival. And we encourage parents and uh, anyone who wants to volunteer and, and be useful uh, during the festival to contact the Department of Education. According to the Department of Education's literacy team, the primary goal of the festival is to foster a love of reading among the students and engage them in the use of higher order critical thinking skills. Independent leisure reading should be given prominence. From the practical point of view, leisure reading can open the world to students. Bear in mind that texts are sources of knowledge. Wrapped up in text are histories, stories, ideas, facts, and arguments. Students may find features in texts that can inform their lives and expose them to desirable values which they might not otherwise encounter. They may also want to model their writing on that of a particular author or to emulate a specific character. And just to remind you, the activity on Friday, it runs from 9 to 3.30 p.m. And so although the children are away from school, they will be engaged in learning activities. At Friday's Rainforest of Reading Book Festival, students are also expected to wear costumes depicting the books their respective schools will feature. The residents of the Flamboyant Nursing Home on Saturday, October 31st, received a special visit from the members of the Youth Fellowship of the Bethel Apostolic Church of God. The group made the visit not only to celebrate International Month of Older Persons with the home's elderly residents, but also as the occasion coincided with their church's celebration of a significant milestone. We are honored to be among the seniors, this being your special month the last day of the month of the elderly. I am so glad, we are all so glad to be here with you. We are glad to be here as part of our 20th anniversary. We did not leave you out. We know, we knew that you all are very important to our society. So we are here this morning to show appreciation. The group used the occasion to make a presentation of gifts to the nursing home. On behalf of the Bethel Fellowship at the Bethel Apostolic Church, 
we'd like to present these token of appreciation to the flamboyant nursing home and we like to give you all this so let you all know that God is good and we hope that you will use them beneficial and we hope that you will appreciate them. On behalf of the residents and staff of the Flamboyant Nursing Home, we thank you all so much for gracing us with your presence this morning and these gifts will be beneficial for us here and we thank you so much again for coming and giving us these gifts. The Bethel Apostolic Youth Fellowship mostly spends its visit, blessing and entertaining the residents through prayer, scripture reading, poetry and song. That's it for this evening's edition of the Navis Newscast. Thank you for viewing. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. Good night.